What is up, guys? Welcome to the Being Beautifully Honest podcast and channel. Thanks so much for being here and for being subscribed. If you're not, go ahead and hit that button. And if you're listening on YouTube, hit that like button. It's like walking into the room and hitting that light switch. We just want to go ahead and brighten up the place. So let's get into this podversation. All right. I, I wanted to talk about this because I found it laughable when I heard this story about Sean P. Diddy, Puffy, Love, Combs, whatever the heck he's calling himself these days. I can't even keep up. And you have to question a person or not even question the actual person, but question the motives of a person that is always changing their name always having these aliases. Isn't that something that is the attribute of someone that has a good deal to cover up? And there have been a lot of allegations and rumors about him over the years. I'm not even getting into all of that. You can go and Google them. I'm quite sure there's a lot of YouTube videos on that stuff. And I've even listened to a few of them myself. But listen, Sean Combs, He has been reported to have transferred the publishing rights to the bad boy artists, including Mace, Faith Evans, and the notorious B.I.G. And so the story is that he's transferred the publishing rights back to his artists and songwriters to coincide with Bad Boy Entertainment's 30th anniversary this year. And his career has been plagued with accusations that he stole his artist masters and left them broke, destitute, homeless, and even some of them dead from the likes of Craig Mack. Some even question whether he had anything to do with the notorious B.I.G. Biggie Smalls' untimely passing, as well as other artists, like, I mean, there's a, there's a number of them that have unfortunately lost their lives or definitely have been left out in the cold. And so a lot of people are not looking at him in a favorable light. And some people, they're like applauding him, like, way to go. That's amazing, but is it? So the story is that Bad Boy Records artists who already received their publishing rights include singer Faith Evans and rappers Mace, The Locks, 112, and the estate of the Notorious B.I.G., according to Billboard. Over the years, Bad Boy's legendary roster has included Craig Mack, Carl Thomas, Shine, Dream, Danity Kane, Total, Black Rob, Machine Gun Kelly, French Montana, and Janelle Monet. Sources told Billboard the process of reassigning publishing rights back to artists began in May 2021 after Combs turned down billion dollar offers to sell the Bad Boy catalog. In a since deleted Instagram post, Mace revealed he'd offered Combs $2 million to buy back his publishing, but it was declined. In the post, Mace wrote, Your past business practices knowingly has continued, purposely starved your artists, and been extremely unfair to the very same artists that helped you obtain that Icon Award on the iconic Bad Boy label. For example, you still got my publishing from 24 years ago in which you gave me $20,000 which makes me never want to work with you as any artist wouldn't. This is not Black excellence at all. And in an interview on The Breakfast Club, Sean, he claimed Mace owed him $3 million for an advance on an album that he never recorded. But they squashed their beef before Combs, tr- Combs transferred the ownership of his publishing to Mace last month. And rapper Cameron made the announcement in an Instagram post on August 30th. He said, my and word murder mace had to sit this one out. He just got his publishing back from Puff. Just finished the paperwork for that yesterday. The news comes as MTV VMA has announced that Sean Combs will be honored with the Global Icon Award for his unparalleled career and continued influence that has achieved unrivaled global success in music and beyond.
This is a quote. This is definitely not my words. But anyway, he's been nominated for four awards for his work with other artists, including the Creepin' Remix and Gotta Move On. Sean Combs will also perform during the VMAs for the first time since 2005. He has won VMAs for Best R&B Video for I'll Be Missing You and the Viewer's Choice Award for It's All About the Benjamins. Now listen, from what I have been told, what I have been reading, for some, this may sound like, oh, this is such a great thing. He's giving his artists back their publishing, giving them their publishing rights. But sometimes what may seem like a good thing is not always really such a good thing. So from what I have been told, as it's on this 30-year mark, they are actually obligated to give their artists their masters back in 35 years if the artist files a claim. So basically what it's looking like is he's giving it out five years earlier. And so there may be some tax advantage or benefit. It's not just out of the goodness of his heart, basically, is what some people are reporting. And if that is the truth, because again, this is what people are reporting. I'm not saying that that is the God's honest truth because I really don't know. But if that is the truth, I can definitely see that being the truth because it just he just does not seem like the type to me that does things like this out of the goodness of his heart. He does not. He, he, he just does not seem like that type. He has not portrayed himself to be that type over the years. He has come across as very cold hearted He, even though we have seen him in a performance standpoint, not really so much behind the scenes, but even the stuff that we have seen that has been on television. Like if you ever used to watch Making the Band back in the day and seeing him send these kids, literally they were kids, but back then I was around the same age, so I didn't see them as kids, but these young adults or older kids sending them out to walk to go and get him a cheesecake and come back and to treat people the way that he was treating them. For some, they saw it as, oh, this is the grind. This is a hustle. You got to do what you got to do if you want to be in this industry. But he knows he never did any stuff like that in order to get where he is. And it's the people like that who really got uh, not even so much a fair shot, but they just got an opportunity and a chance in life that really want to put other people through the ringer in order to get some sense of success. And then those people never even really achieve the level of success that they may have worked hard for to obtain, not so much really deserve because nobody deserves to be given anything in that sense when it comes to fame and glorification and success and all of that type of stuff. But I'm saying if you worked hard for it to do all of these things and then you're working at White Castle, you're sleeping in your friend's basement on the couch, you wind up in a cult somewhere and, you know, you lose your life. It's just like a lot of the things that we've seen a number of the people that he has had as artists on his label go through after the fact. It does. And and looking at the lifestyle that he has lived, people can talk about mindset all day long. I know a lot of people love to get on this soapbox of talking about mind and mindset and manifesting and all of those things are real and true but yet and still a lot of people have to get other things besides getting a pep talk in order to get to a level of achieving success and to see him live the extravagant lifestyle that he has lived and to be exposed in the way that he has been when it was put out there that the liquor deal that he had, it's not even his company, but he portrayed it to be his business, but he's nothing more than a brand ambassador for that liquor, Ciroc and De Leon. It was not his creation. It was not his company, but he wanted to come out here and sue the company for race discrimination and some other things that he alleged. And they turned around and countersued him and exposed him and said that 
this N word only put in a thousand dollars into this deal, but yet this is his business. Get the heck up out of here. So to hear that this is something that he is doing right now, the motives absolutely are questionable. I don't think that there's good intentions involved in it. Some people were making comments in the comment section saying, yeah, he's trying to get into heaven now, (laughs) getting closer to that, you know, that end of life journey. So now he wants to try to make it right with God. So he wants to try to do some good deeds before he leaves this earth. Who knows? I ain't saying that him giving the artist the master's back is a bad thing, but I do not believe that at this point in time, like May said, he has starved his artists. If at this point in time, those artists getting the masters back at this point in time is really going to help them to eat when he's really eaten off of it for so long. Like what is left? Are there even any leftovers or scraps left of it to make sense of it? Because I just am not sure. The music industry isn't really hitting like that. You're hearing about artists selling their catalogs and different things like that trust and believe if they believed that there was more money in it than to just sell off their entire catalog i don't believe that they would be doing it i think the most recent one that i heard about was nelly who sold off his catalog so i'm just saying i don't know i don't really know what the benefit is in it for him to do this and especially to do this at this point in time But trust and believe, I do believe that there is a benefit in it for him. It's not, oh, I'm just going to do this out of the goodness of my heart. I just woke up one morning, Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, you know what? It's time. (laughs) Go ahead and give all those artists their their publishing bag, even the estate of the Notorious B.I.G. that you've been eating off for many, 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 many years. And it's questionable if he had lived what he has still been sign with the label as long as he has been claiming him because at that point in time at the end of life what can you really do I don't know it's questionable but yeah in my personal opinion I'm not saying that people don't still play the music there wouldn't be any brands that would want to utilize some of the music from any of those artist catalogs because a lot of it is definitely still good music But there's all of this new stuff coming out all of the time. So at this point in time, the market for that music to use it in a commercial manner may not really be there. And even if a company or an entity finds one of the artists or one of the songs from the catalogs useful for a project or a movie or a commercial or a brand or something that they're putting out, the market value for it has decreased because of the age of it. You know what I'm saying? So something that is fresher and newer by a more recent, fresher, newer artist that comes out and puts some music and some content out, it's going to be far more marketable and much more expensive versus a track from a 112 album from many 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 moons ago let's just be real you know so it's definitely not of the goodness of his heart i just really question what the exact motives are you can let me know your thoughts about it in the comment section but to me it's all questionable but yet and still i still don't trust it and i don't believe that there was any real good intentions for the artist for it in my personal opinion so guys thank you so much for being here for liking and subscribing i'm beth just being beautifully honest so until the next time i wanted to keep it brief beautiful and now i'm going to say bye <laughs>